was his last Sunday for 2019. How crazy is that? I am really looking forward to seeing what God's going to do in this coming year. It's just, it's amazing. I can't even believe what he's already done in my life. But yeah, just let's see. Be expected to see what he's going to do. Why don't you gather around? Come in, take your seats. We're just going to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. Oh Lord, you are so good. We're just so thankful and grateful to be here. Able to be in your presence, to worship you, to praise you. God, you just, you made the way for us to be able to come to you. And we just are forever thankful, God. And we just worship you today. Father, we want to bless your holy name in everything that we say and do. So God, we just thank you and we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
end of the year, this is a bit of a resty week. It's nice. I've had all my kids, all my grandkids, and I'm exhausted. I can hardly put two words in front of each other. But life's good. But this is a good week. This is a nice resty week. That's lovely. So that's good. But in the new year, things are happening. Things are beginning. Things are winding up, not winding down. First of all, we have uh, summer in the parks. Now this is exciting. We are. Um, we have four outreaches planned. Um, Churchill, five. <laughs> Churchill, Mulgee Heights, Philip and Richard Street, Henry White Reserve, and uh, Apex Park. And so, what the plan is, I'll just describe to you a little bit of what it's going to look like. We've got the Love Gets Land Band. We've got a barbecue. We've got some kids games and activities. And what we're doing is um, we're just hitting the parks from four o'clock. Well, uh, Churchill is from 11 o'clock till two o'clock. The other ones in Mowie are tea time. So from four o'clock till six o'clock, we're just hitting the parks. We're uh, setting up the van, we're giving away coffee, we're having a sausage. We're playing some games with the neighborhood kids. And literally, we're just introducing ourselves to the neighborhood. And we're just saying, hi guys, we're still here after, you know, 50 years. And how you do. <laughs> and and really just we just want to shine. We just want to shine for Jesus. We're praying that today. Jesus is the light of the world. And he said to us, You are the light of the world. You know, and we want to shine the light for Jesus in Maui. We love this town. We love this community. And it's always been my dream, my vision, my passion to you know, if, if, I've always said if I could make all these walls see-through so that the church isn't segregated, kind of, separated. I know we're out of the world, we're in the world, we're not of the world, and I know all that. But Jesus has planted this here in this community to bring his light and his life and his blessing and his goodness out to this community. So that's what we want to do over the month of January. There's lots of families, lots of homes where kids can't get away for holidays. And, um, you know, it's a long six weeks for the kids that only have their little neighbourhood to run around in. So we're just going to go and bring some joy, bring some light, and bring some life to our neighbourhood. If you would like to be part of that team, then please come and see me after the service today. I'd like a little meeting here at, say, about 12 o'clock. Go grab a coffee. You come and have the meeting on our donor. Serving coffee out in your room. Grab your coffee. Come, they know what's going on. Grab your coffee. Come out, and we'll have a little meeting about who wants to be involved in what areas. So we will need people to help with the coffee. We need people to help with the barbecue. We need people to help with the games. And we need people. If you don't think you can do any of those things, can you sit and be friendly? <laughs> can you chat to someone? You know. So all of those things. But we'd love to see you after the service so we can plan that uh, those events. And next Saturday at about 2 o'clock, we're going to meet and we're going to go for a little prayer walk um, around a couple of areas and hand out some leaflets. So if you're interested in, if you don't want to be there for those events but you'd love to help that way, we're going to just put some leaflets around the areas that we'll be visiting. So we'd love your help with that. All right, so that's the Good. summer in the park. Let's go for it. Oh, do we have a promo video for that? Yeah. Sorry. You could be playing that. Go for it. No can. Establish a good 
routine of Bible reading and prayer and getting into God's Word, this is a great way to start that. So see Jo, who is this lovely lady here in the blue dress, and uh, she'd love to accommodate you by helping you subscribe to Every Day with Jesus. And just a little note from the music team, uh, not music team, from the coffee team, there's some um, milk left over from an event that um, Skip there, love Gip's name had, and there's milk available for a donation. So if you'd like some two litres of milk, um, just see Nathan after the service over where the coffee machine is. Just one more thing. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings, but I just want to <coughs> read. It is the end of the year and we're about to embark on a new one. But you know, God is good and God is faithful. And, you know, we come to the end of this year and good, bad or indifferent, it is what it is. It's done. We can't go back and change things or undo things or whatever. And I just want to read you this little passage from Paul book of Philippians chapter 3 he says I don't mean to say that I've already achieved those things or that I've already reached perfection but I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me no dear brothers and sisters I have not achieved it but I focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let us who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we've already made. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I've told you often before, and I say it, Again, with tears in my eyes, there are those who can, whose conduct shows their enemies of the cross of Christ and headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus lives and are eagerly waiting for him to return as our saviour. And he'll take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under control. You know, we've got to forget the things that are past. We press on to the things of the future. And we remember that life here on earth is passing. We have to keep our eyes on eternal goals, on our eternal Christ Jesus, who is one day coming back to this earth. So... Good, bad or indifferent, 2019 is all but done. So let's look forward with faith to what Jesus has for us in the future. And even as we take up these tithes and offerings, we're saying we have faith. We believe in the future. We want to be part of the vision of where you're taking us and where you're calling us to. We leave behind the past. That other verse that Paul says, you know, this one thing I do. So press on. So let's do that together. Amen. Let's pray. Father Lord, we just thank you for the testimony of giving back to you. You've been so good to each one of us. And so Lord, we just ask you now to accept our gifts, our offerings to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's continue with our worship this morning. Amen. Amen.
it's not that it's more holy or anything, it's just that sometimes it's like a, um, a step. You, you need to um, take it out. Yeah, get, get out of your zone, get out of where you are and make a, an intentional step to, to step out of what you're thinking and what you're going through.
There's actually a, a new song, um, not like what I'm writing or anything, but a new song in, in someone's heart, might be in everybody's heart, but just sing out your new song. Just sing out your new song. It doesn't have to be pleasant for everyone else to hear it. It's music to the Lord when it's, it's your heart song to Him. Sing out a new song to the Lord. And you know, you can praise God 
um, out of that lamentation. That often the songs of the Psalms and those songs started off as a lamentation, you know, woe is me, look what's happening, God, this life's pretty awful and my enemies are all around me and things look pretty bad. But then the eyes get onto the Lord God Almighty, the Saviour, the one we go into the high tower, we stand on that rock, we lift up our eyes to the hills and we lift up the hands that hang down and we start to praise and we start to worship. And the song that was once a song of mourning turns into a song of joy and a song of hope and a song of deliverance and a song of salvation. And that's the new song that I'm singing in your heart today. Understanding, but lean on God. He's your strength, your tower. Look to Him, not to man. Man will let you down, but with God, He will never let you down. He is God, the ultimate finisher of our faith. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's communion. This is the last day or the last Sunday that we have of this year. If you could yeah, give out the elements, things. The last Sunday that you have, and we've already sung about it, to reflect on our past year, to look forward with anticipation to the year to come. You know, I guess there's lots of things in each of our hearts that we'd love to share, but they're too deep sometimes to share. That's why we have a Heavenly Father as well. That's why we have a brother confidant whose name is Jesus. What's your, what's your year been like? We're here to remember this morning Jesus. I'm not here to give you a mini sermon or to rave on about my latest revelation. I'm here to lead you around the Lord's table. There's much that Jesus did on this earth while he was in the flesh. But now he's in his father's house, seated next to the father. I want to give you this morning just a few little questions. And after each statement or question, excuse me, I want to give you a little couple of seconds or a little bit of time to reflect on what's been said. Here we go. First one is, 
He died and he rose for you. Do you appreciate it? Reflect. Not a yes or no. Reflect. He is soon coming back as king. Are you looking forward to that? The new heaven and your new earth, do you see that as your home? Reflect. Do you speak with him often, every day? Do you speak with him often, every day? Reflect. Do you read his inspired word, the Bible, often? Yeah. Do you read his inspired word, the Bible, often? And I'm not asking, do you flick your phone on? I'm asking, do you read your Bible often? Do you study? Reflect. What has he brought you through this year? Did you thank him? What has he brought you through this year? Did you thank him? Reflect. Remember his sacrifice. Sorry, let me go back one. Are you looking for him? Are you looking to him for your encouragement and not to others? Or are you looking to your self importance? Let me repeat that. Are you looking to him for your encouragement? Or are you looking to others? Or are you looking to your self-importance? Reflect. <clears throat> Remember his sacrifice was for all time, every time, now time. Do you live in that? Remember his sacrifice, what we're about to do in taking the communion, was for all time, every time, and now time. Do we live in that? Reflect. Bread and the wine are symbols. But remember him as we drink and eat. 
remember him as we reflect. You have in your hands this morning a piece of biscuit and some grape juice. It's a representation of those two, el two elements are we taking into our, that we're taking into our body represent his body which gives us strength and his blood which gives us life. Life everlasting. I wonder if Rob and Craven, if you could give thanks for the bread, and if Jackson, could you give thanks for the wine, please? Thank you. Rob? Father God, we thank you for the life of Jesus. That body that was broken for us, that was pierced for us. Father, we just call us. I wonder if we might just stand as we break it together. We have them both in our hands. Let's just eat them simultaneously. Eat and drink. If you have a thankful heart, you've reflected this morning and seen how much our Jesus means to us. If your Jesus means to you, maybe you'd like to thank him. up a little bit. You can Approaching the year 2020, and I guess 
Um, a lot of people have been talking about vision because, you know, 2020 is my perfect eyesight. But uh, today I'd like to use this time to talk about one of the other senses, and that is our hearing. We've got a couple of pictures. If we can perhaps go to the next slide to show the first, first of those pictures, please. Picture of hearing. How about that? <laughs> I think that, that dog should be able to hear very well. What about we go to the next, next one? <laughs> that person's hearing, but if you were trying to talk to them at the moment, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get what you were saying, would they? Because they're listening, but you know, they're, they're only just listening to one little channel, obviously enjoying the music that they're listening to. But there's perhaps the next picture tells a little bit more about the kind of listening that I'm interested to talk about today. This, this young fellow is listening and what I'm going to talk with you today about is listening for the voice of God. John chapter 10 and verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And that same verse in the message version reads like this. My sheep recognise my voice, I know them and they follow me. And the New Living Translation says, My sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. So, three different versions of the same verse, each bring out a different aspect. The, the Hebrew word, I don't know how you say it properly, but akuo um, means is, has all these different um, inflections, but we've got these three things, to hear, to recognise, and to listen. So I want to throw out a challenge to you today. In 2020, will you listen for your Heavenly Father's voice? Will you hear your Heavenly Father's voice? And will you recognise it when you do hear it? And then, having listened, and heard and recognised the voice of your shepherd, will you follow? We're talking about Jesus being the King of Kings as we've been worshipping this morning. And he's also our shepherd. He's the one who guides us through our life. A shepherd looks after the sheep and brings the sheep in the right places and leads and guides and protects. And I was just thinking as we were worshipping today, how amazing that the person who is your personal, individual shepherd happens to be the King of Kings and the Lord of all the universe. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Sure. So today we're talking about listening for the voice of God. And listening rather than just hearing or recognising because, you know, if we don't listen... We're not going to hear, and we're not going to recognise the voice of God speaking to us. So the first thing, the most important thing, is listening. And it's not about making a difference between Father and Son and Holy Spirit. I believe Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as a trinity, speaks to us. And, and God is speaking continually. Amen. I don't believe that God ever stops speaking to us, but we stop listening sometimes. So... It's not about, um, the point is, are you listening? And even more to the point, who or what are you listening to? Who have you been listening to in 2019? And who are you going to listen to in 2020, the year that's just about to dawn on us? As I was preparing this, I thought that um, listening to God applies in at least three different levels of the Christian life. There's a general lifestyle of listening, there are times when you have, you're going through something and you really need an answer, you need some specific guidance. And then there's just the moment by moment promptings of the Holy Spirit. There's at least three different areas that I'd like to share a little bit about today. So Father God, just help us as we take time to think about you as our shepherd and just that we need to be listening to hear your voice. So, Father, just reveal some things to us. Let there be something in this message 
that everybody can take something away from that will help them in their walk with you. And if there's people here who don't know you, Lord, I just pray by your spirit that you'll just put a desire in their heart that they want you to be their shepherd and that they want to follow you. So Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. The whole um, shepherd thing doesn't work quite so well in Australia where sheep tended to be herded by dogs or motorbikes or something rather than, um, rather than by a shepherd calling. Um, but a, a Middle East shepherd, so I'm told, would, uh, would lead the sheep to the waterhole. And there'd be other sheep there in the waterhole, they'd all be drinking, they'd all be feeding. But then when it was time to return back to their sheepfold, the shepherd would call the sheep and sometimes even call the sheep by name and they would recognise their own shepherd and they would, they would go. The sheep would respond to their own shepherd's voice. And uh, you know, sometimes we sort of think, well, you know, you're saying we're all sheep, you know, and sometimes we sort of feel like, well, you know, I don't feel like you're sheep. But don't miss the, don't miss the real meaning here. Because we have a shepherd who cares for us and watches over us and leads and guides us to the places where we are going to prosper and we're going to be blessed. He is the shepherd who always, without fail, knows what is best for us. Sometimes I don't know what's best for me, but I have a shepherd whose name is Jesus and he always knows what is best for me. So. Um, Psalm 23. I want to read Psalm 23. I know we're familiar with this passage. But just think of the, the benefits in your life if Jesus is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, I won't go without anything that I need. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Then the next verse says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. I was sort of thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it was already mentioned once this morning. But like, you might have all these enemies coming against you and, and, they're, and they're, they can't get to you because the Lord is protecting you. All these enemies that are surrounding you. And in the meantime, you're just having a feast because the, the Lord has provided. Isn't that, a, isn't that a wonderful thing? He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We sang about that too, didn't we? Your goodness running after us and following us. Amen. So all these amazing benefits. You know, I, I'm not... We often, in, at the start of the New Year, we sort of say, Happy New Year, and, and we really pray for everybody to have a blessed New Year. You know, the reality is, some of us are really going to go through some tough things in 2020. It's always the case. But God is going to be with us. The Lord is going to be with you in all those things. And that's what makes the difference. I always... So, yeah, I, I'm not afraid to be a, a sheep. I'm a sheep. And Jesus is my shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. There's no better way to live than to have Jesus as your shepherd. I always believed, when I was pastoring churches and whatever, that hearing from God was the number one priority. Yeah. If you're in leadership of a home group or a Sunday school class or a youth group or whatever it is, any kind of ministry, if you're in leadership, you're going to want to be able to hear from God. Because you want to lead that group in the way that God says for you to lead that group. So hearing from God and being able to hear from God is an absolute top priority. 
But you know what? We all need to hear from God from our own lives as well. If you're in a relationship, you need to be able to listen to that other person. Listening is essential in any worthwhile relationship, isn't it? You know, have you, have you ever had those conversations with people who just don't let you get a word in and you're sort of, in the end, just kind of thinking, all right, okay, keep talking, <laughs> and you're wanting to get away because they just won't stop talking? And if, no, don't put your hands up, you don't need to. <laughs> That's not a good basis for a relationship, is it? And so when we come to God in prayer, it's not just about us <coughs> telling God what's going on in our life, but it's about listening to what God is saying to us as well. I read a book recently about listening, about 300 pages. I didn't think there was that much to know about listening, but apparently there is. And I realised that um, I'm not as good a listener as I need to be. Um, I know sometimes I'm that person that the eyes glaze over a little bit when people are talking. I need to work on my listening skill. But I suspect I'm not the only one that needs to work on the skill of listening. It's already been said in a, in a word. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever you've been through this year, whatever you're facing in 2020, it's absolutely vital that you know how to hear from God. Have you had some major disappointment, some major tragedy? And you might come to God and God might not give you all the answers that you want. He might just simply reassure you that he's bringing you through. And you're going to be okay on the other side. He might just bring that reassurance. Are you facing major changes in 2020? One word from God is all that you need to give you the clarity and the courage to move forward in faith. You need to hear from God. And at this time of the year, it's a very important thing to think about. Am I listening to God? So God, God wants us to be overcomers. And he's going to give us the faith and the, and the courage to move forward with whatever God has for us today. So you can see where I'm going with this. Our relationship with God depends not just on us praying, but depends on us listening as well. Some tips. Have we got those up on the screen? Okay. Thank you, you're doing a fantastic job there, Lily. Hey. One of the tips is make some quiet places and times in your life. Shut out the distractions of the world. Life can get so busy. And you know, there's stuff coming at us all the time, advertisements and, and all sorts of stuff. And, and sometimes you really do have to make a deliberate decision. No, I'm going to shut all of that stuff out for a little while so that I can hear from God. Sometimes we're afraid of silence. Yeah. Sometimes we're afraid to just have silence. It's like, you know, you're, talk, you're with somebody, you feel like you have to be talking all the time. You don't. <laughs> And with God, sometimes just, just be silent and just allow God to put something in your spirit and to speak with you. Second thing, practice the presence of God as you go through your day. Just, just the awareness, just remind yourself, God is with me here. I, Christ is in me. I, God is here with me. And just be aware of that. Because, you know, we get so busy doing stuff. And, and sometimes, you know, I know I'm so busy trying to get a job done or something that it's like I get focused on that and it's almost like I forget that God is actually here with me in that. Keep a journal. Write out your prayers. And, and write down what you feel God is saying to you. It's something I've found to be enormously helpful over many years. Just keeping a journal. Read the Word of God, but not just read it. Read it with a heart to listen. And stop and pray when you, when you come up with something. Don't just, don't just say, okay, I've got to get through three chapters and I've got five minutes, let's get on with it. But be prepared to stop and listen. What is God saying to me through this passage that I'm reading? Make time for the things that God often uses to speak to you. How, does, how do you often hear God speaking to you? Do you come to church and somewhere during the service... 
Something is said that just goes bang and you just know that's a word from God that you need to take on board. Maybe it's in your, the midweek meetings that you go to and, and something really connects and yes, I'm, I'm really hearing from God in that point. Um, for me, a lot of times it's through music and through songs. And over my whole Christian life, God has spoken to me many, many, many times through songs that I've heard and continues to do that. We sang one of those songs today that's, that sounds, God has just spoken to me in incredible ways this year. Um, sometimes it can be listening to podcasts. There's all sorts of things that you can do these days. Or simply just spending time with that Christian brother or sister who you might spend time with them and you just come away feeling edified. You've come away feeling that, you know, God has really spoken something to you. Do you have people like that, that you can spend time with? That's often one of the ways that God might speak to you. Or it might just be that still, small voice that he speaks to your spirit when you're quiet enough to listen. Okay, so the second aspect of listening is listening when we need some specific guidance. And by the way, if you really want, anybody wants copies of the message, so you can see Sandy afterwards and she can photocopy some for you. But this is the time of the year when a lot of people, a lot of young people are really seeking God about their course of study or maybe a job or work. There's all sorts of big decisions. And they're critical decisions that are, that are going to, to affect your whole life. You really need to hear from God. There could be relationship decisions. Um, it's good to have godly mentors that you can come and, and bounce things off. But in the end, it's important to hear from God yourself. So some people find that setting aside some time for fasting is, um, is very helpful. Um, I have a, a sort of set of personal goals uh, and objectives for my life. And they were... They sort of really came to me after an extended time of fasting. I believe fasting, I don't think I can really do that quite so much these days, but fasting is a, is a way of putting aside some distractions and, and really getting focusing in on hearing from God. So, listen to what God is saying. Popular movies often end up with the message of, you know, just listen to your heart. How many times have you heard that in, in movies, you know? Don't worry about all the other people, what they're saying. Just listen to your heart and you'll be fine. Well, I want to say beware of that. Because the Bible actually says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. And Jesus actually warned for people to... That warn people that all sorts of evil thoughts proceed out of the heart of man. So yeah, we can be born again, uh, renewed people, and our, and our heart is transformed and changed. But it's not just listening to our heart. I think it's better to surrender our own our agenda and ambitions to God. In fact, I think that's essential. And again, what we sang today... One of, the, one of the lines was like this. My life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything. Let me tell you, that's better than just listening to your heart or going with your feelings. Feelings can be deceptive. Go with what God says. I remember, I don't know, it must have been 1972 or 1973. I was just out of school, just working, and I had my holidays, and I went to Tasmania. And I love Tasmania, it's a beautiful state. But this one particular day, I was in Queenstown. And I don't know if anybody's been to Queenstown in Tasmania, but back in the early 1970s, it was like, it was like a moonscape. It was barren, it was, it was really a weird place. I remember walking along the main street, and I, I just was playing, I remember saying, God, my whole life is still very much in front of me. You know, I, I wasn't married back then. It was still six years or so before I even got married. And my career was, was just, you know, my job was just kind of starting to get happening. 
And I remember saying, God, all the major decisions of my life are still in front of me. And I want you to be the one that guides all of those decisions. So there was, I must have been 18 or something like that. But I just really wanted to commit all of those big decisions that were going to come in the next few years or the next decade. I wanted to commit all of those things to God. When Sandy and I first met, little story. When Sandy and I first met, we had some time together and it was really nice. We met each other at a, at a Merricks camp and we had a bit of time together. And then we both went home. I went to my home church, which was Sale, and Sandy came back to this church here. And, and I was praying and saying, Lord, if this is a, a relationship that you want for me, then I pray that it will work out. But if it's not the relationship that you want for me, um, I, I just pray that you'll just help me to forget about this and, you know, that you'll have something else. <coughs> what I didn't realise that Sandy was also praying at the same time, saying, Lord, I don't want to, uh, I, I don't want to hurt this, this young man that I've met, so Lord, please, if it's not from you, please just end it now so that it won't go any further. Um, and so we were both kind of praying, we were both kind of surrendering this potential relationship to God in prayer. And now we've been married for 41 years, so how about that? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it's about surrendering what you have, what lies before you to God, and that's how he guides our decisions. Yeah. Maybe you're in one of those situations where there just does not seem to be any way through. <coughs> well, another song that we sang today is that God is the way maker. Yeah. So if you don't feel like there's any way through, God can still make a way. The, the, um, the Israelites, when they came to the Red Sea and that Egyptian army was chasing them, you know, they felt like there was no way for them to go. God opened up a way. Yeah. And if you feel like you've come to a dead end and there's no way forward, let me tell you, God is the way maker and he will make a way for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody is pressuring you about something. You know, and I found that decisions made in a hurry rarely turn out to be right. But maybe if there's a salesperson that's saying, you've got to make a decision now because the sale ends today, uh, the offer won't last... Just tell them no thanks. If you feel pressured, just tell them no thanks. I don't want to be pressured into any decision. And if someone's pressuring you for an answer about something, tell them that you'll seek God about it. And if they say, well, no, that's not any good. You, you've got to make a decision now. I suggest you've already got your answer. <laughs> if they're pressuring you that much, it's not from God. In the Old Testament, and keep moving, time, the high priest wore a special breastplate, and in the breastplate there was a pocket that had some items that the um, Bible scholars have been arguing about ever since and puzzling about. They had in this pocket on their breastplate, or the ephod, they had these things called the Urim and the Thummim. There's a couple of scriptures I think that might be up there, as you can see. These were evidently used somehow to give guidance to people. In 1 Samuel 14, uh, when Saul was really, you know, in a bad place spiritually, he called for a priest, and I believe he called for the Urim and the Thummim to get an answer from God. But in that particular case, God didn't give him an answer, and, and he was getting desperate. Um, in Nehemiah chapter 7, they, for some reason, had to make a decision about whether certain people were allowed to eat from the sacrifices that were being made by the people. And in verse 25 of Nehemiah 7, it says, The governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and Thummim. So they were saying, we don't know what to do. How do we find out guidance? How do we know what to do? Well, we've got the Urim and the Thummim, except they didn't actually have it. They needed a priest who was actually able to do this. Here's my best guess as to how that Urim and Thummim worked. 
And you can disagree with this because this is something that's not actually spelled out in the scripture. But this is how I see it. It was two flat stones. The Urim and the Thummim. Two flat stones. And they both had a positive side and a negative side. So the priest would come before God and would say, God, please show what your answer is. And then they would flip these two coins or two flat stones. If both stones came up negative, the priest would report that God's answer was no. If both, both stones came up positive, the priest would report that God's answer was yes. And if one was positive and the other was negative, the priest would tell the people, sorry, God hasn't given an answer. Okay, so now, how does that help us? Am I, am I suggesting that we all get coins and plus two? No, I'm not suggesting that. Let me explain something. First, we have to go to the book of Colossians, and chapter 3, and verse 15, which says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And in the Amplified, it says, Let the peace of Christ the inner calm of one who walks daily with him be the controlling factor in your hearts deciding and settling questions that arise there's different versions of the amplified bible believe it or not and there's another version that says let the peace of god act as an umpire so the peace of god as described there is is like an inward calm that comes from uh, regularly walking with god and so that's often a way that we can tell if we're on the right track. If you're, if you're doing something and, and you have this unease about it, that you feel like that peace of God has kind of lifted off you and, and you know that something's not right, that's the time to go back and look at what you're doing and, and check on that. But the peace of God, as a, the, um, the CJB is, um, is a, a Bible that intends to bring out the Jewishness of scriptures, the complete Jewish Bible. And, and it says, let the shalom which comes from the Messiah be your heart's decision maker. So that's good, isn't it? Okay, so back to the Urim and Thummim principle. I've often found it's helpful to come to God with a specific question, like even a yes, no question. Do you want me to do such and such? And if I sense the peace of God, on that point, it can be an important factor in making that decision. And if I don't sense the peace of God, I take that as a no. So here's an example. Supposing you've been asking yourself, should I help in children's ministry in 2020? Uh, you could ask Arita, and Arita will say yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I'm not saying to flip a coin, yes, yes, or if it's heads, I'll help in children's ministry, if it's tails, I won't. But what I'm saying is ask questions in prayer and look for confirmations. Because God will put it in your heart. God will put, if you, if you are to, to lead in the children's ministry, it's not going to be against your will, it's going to be something that bubbles up inside you as a desire. And maybe you might start noticing the children around the church and you want to be a bit more involved, you want to get to know them, that can be a confirmation that maybe God is calling you to, uh, to help with children's ministry. Look for confirmations. There's all sorts of confirmations. I went into the prayer meeting this morning and um, our pastor immediately started praying. A lot of the things that I've got written down in my, in my message, and I actually said to her, did I send a copy of, of my message to you? She said, no, I didn't get that. But there's confirmations, isn't there? We, we see all sorts of little confirmations in life. So it's, it's not about there's always a right way and there's a wrong way. It's sometimes, you know, God has things for us and God is able to work things out. So it's, it's, some people are scared to do anything because they're scared that they might be missing the will of God. And please don't be scared of missing the will of God. If you're not hearing something specific from God, Press ahead with what seems the right thing to do. It's fine. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So I just want to finish off just very quickly with talking about listening for the moment-by-moment -moment promptings. We've already talked about listening as a general life um, practice. 
We've talked about seeking God when we need guidance or we need to get through some particular thing. But there's also the moment-by-moment promptings. Some nice music there. (laughs) You know, walking with God, being in step with the Holy Spirit, is fantastically exciting. Because, you know, it's like there's all these amazing coincidences seem to happen around you wherever you go. You know, can you relate to what I'm saying? That, that God is doing all sorts of little things. It might be just these little blessings, or you, you just happen to turn up on someone's doorstep at the perfect time when they needed to talk to you. Or, um, you know, the Holy Spirit might say, ring so-and-so today. Or the, the Holy Spirit might even say, as you're going out the door, check the oven. You know? <laughs> all sorts of things. Or make time for a coffee with, with so-and-so in your family. These little promptings of the Holy Spirit are so exciting because because God is is bringing all sorts of stuff together and he's orchestrating it all and we're in the middle of it and it's blessing and it's 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 life and it's walking in the spirit hearing accurately from God like any skill gets better with practice I know I know we've had pastor Rob Bailey Robin Miss Bailey teaching people about the different ways that people hear from God and the different ways people move in the Holy Spirit. So be aware of that, that God is able to speak to you, just in these little things as well, and they can be just an enormous blessing. So a few tips for recognising the voice of God. First of all, and this is probably most important, a true word from God or impression in your spirit or something that you see in your spirit or hear, it will never contradict the written word of God. If it does contradict the written word of God, reject it because it's not from God. Next thing, a true word from God will not pander to fleshly ego. God is not in the business of of, um, puffing up our ego and and saying, oh, you are so wonderful and so precious and so special. He does love us, and he loves us intensely. But, but we're, in a, we're in a warfare here. He's, he's not just, just trying to sort of make us feel good. He, he wants to be our shepherd, leading us and protecting us and all sorts of things. So a true word from God is not going to pander to your fleshly ego. The Lord's not going to say to you, you know, that was really, you know, that was a really good message today. You're just the best preacher that there ever was. You know, that's not going to be a word from God, is it? Is it? No, of course not. And a word from God is never going to be just an extension of your own thoughts. And I'll, I'll often say, if I'm talking about this to people, I'll, um, I'll maybe say something like, can you, can you picture in your mind six green pigs? And then I'll say, okay, have you, have you had in your mind that picture of six green pigs? And people say, well, yeah. And I'll say, was that there five minutes ago? And they'll say, no, of course not. You suggested it and I've got that picture. And it's like that with God. It's something that's kind of from outside our own thought processes. It's something that God has spoken to us from outside ourselves in a way. And yes, there's a, there's a stirring in us and, and, and a walking with God that sort of makes all of these things possible. But I've always found it's not just an extension of my thinking when God has spoken to me. So I want to finish up by saying, Jesus said, his sheep hear his voice. Or as per the different versions, I hear his voice, recognise his voice. Listen and follow. So my question is, are you one of his sheep? Are you one of his sheep? And are you listening? Are you listening? I just felt before before the meeting, there are some people here who have been listening to a voice of defeat through this year. And you've been listening to a voice that has been telling you lies. It might be a voice out of your own head. It might be a voice of somebody speaking to you and you feel like they're saying, you know, you're not good enough. Um, A voice of hopelessness and defeat. 
Some people here, I believe, have been listening to that sort of voice. And God's saying, stop listening to that. Start listening to the true shepherd. I believe there's also some people that God has been trying to speak to you, but you haven't really been listening. It's been, there's some people that I believe God's been saying, wanting to say, you're heading in the wrong direction. If you keep going in this way, it's not going to work out well for you. And the shepherd is kind of trying to guide the sheep back to the pasture. But if you're not listening, you're not going to hear that warning. You're not going to hear that message. So it, I believe that there are some people here in that situation as well. And the third thing, I believe that there's other people who God has been calling you to a new challenge. A whole new challenge. Some, but, but you in your spirit are saying, no, no, no. That's not possible. That's impossible. I can't do that. But I believe that there's, there's people here that, uh, uh, that, that God's been challenging you. And you've been rejecting it because you said it's not possible. But God's saying it is possible. And you need to listen to what he's saying. So, here's the challenge. Are you listening? And I'd just like to maybe just ask, I know we've been up and down a little bit today. But if what I've said has made sense to you, and, and you feel that, yes, I, I need to make a fresh commitment that in 2020, I'm going to be listening for the voice of God. I'm going to shut out some of those things that have been distracting me so that I can hear and recognise God's voice. Now, there may be other people here who have been doing that all the time, but if, if, if you're in a position where you feel, yes, I need to listen better, I'd just like to invite you to stand and we're just going to close with a prayer. If you feel that you need to listen more closely to what God is saying to you, then stand up and let's just finish with a prayer. And there will be time for ministry. If you want to come forward for some prayer, that's fine too. But by standing, you're saying, God, I believe... I need to be more open to what you're saying. I need to hear my shepherd more clearly. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that the king of all this universe is my shepherd, guiding me to pastures, guiding the things I do, the things I say, and just being there to lead and guide and protect. All of those things is just so amazing, God. And Lord, I just recognise today, we are the sheep of your pasture. And so we want to hear the voice of our shepherd more clearly. We reject right now, we reject the voices that would come from within ourselves, or that would come from the world around us, or that would even come from the devil himself. Those voices we reject right now, because Lord Jesus, it's your voice that we want to hear. We want to hear you speak through your word. We want to hear you speak through our fellowship with other believers. And as we come to pray, Lord, we will make time to listen to what you're saying to us. When there's a situation in our life that we will listen to what you're saying. Lord, we make that commitment and Lord, we look forward to a year of being led and guided by your Holy Spirit and by the shepherd of our souls. And we thank you, Lord, that the promise is good, that goodness will follow us all the days of our life, and that when the enemies come against us, we're there having a feast that you've prepared for us. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the joy and privilege of serving you. We, we lay it all down before you, Lord. We lay down our, our own personal agendas and ambitions. Because we don't want anything else but what your ambition is. There's a, there's a song that's also been ministering to me this year. It says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that saved my soul. It's not about me. It's about God and his kingdom. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We ask your blessings now in Jesus' wonderful name.
Please meet out here with us. Uh, 